my friends, we went to Switzerland for a weekend because we decided, I don't know why, but we decided that um, for our birthdays, we all had our birthdays around the same time, we would go skydiving out of a helicopter and we are like, that'll be fun. And we went there mm-hmm. and we're in this like 12 bunk dorm and it was just the three of us in the dorm and we were like, great, it's just the three of us. Then towards like bedtime um, – this guy came in the room and it, he was staying there too and then we all went to bed and then we could just hear him wanking in his <laughs> bunk and then we all just started like trying not to laugh but then all clearly started giggling as this man was audibly wanking. <laughs> How old was this guy? I don't know, like probably like, you know at that age you can't really gauge age. But he seemed yeah. young. So he could have been anywhere between 24 to 34, depending on how well he'd aged. Okay, sure, sure. And you guys were all like 19, 20? Yeah, we were, tw- we were 20. Well, that's the other thing I don't get about backpacking is that never is it ever acceptable for me to wander into a room <laughs> like full of girls in their young <laughs> 20s or guys in their young 20s be like, all right, my guys, I'm – pretty late um just gonna jump into bed and then i just have a wank it's <laughs> never okay <laughs> yeah. i feel yeah, like it's got to so be bad. a fetish right it's got to be a fetish to want to hear to have hear people hear you to do that because no normal person would feel comfortable just wanking in a room with other people in the room yeah it's shameful it's <laughs> shameful, doll. <laughs> Go to the bathroom. Well, in a room with other people who are close oh, enough I that they you can hear you. The act you believe to be no. shameful. No, 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 not at all. Oh, Jesus Christ, I'm not a psycho. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely like that's an exhibitionist thing yeah. right there, which is which is crazy because like there's backpacking is kind of set up to lend itself to allow people to have wanks in rooms yeah. with other people and, like, everyone just accept, accepts it. No yeah. one's going to complain about that. It's fine. It was backpacking and sack whacking. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, was that the highlight of the Switzerland trip? Uh, did he stop? Did, from With the laughter, did he stop? He just kept going. I don't remember because I just remember the laughter and then us talking about it the next day. You know, like, <laughs> you know that excitement of something so insane happening that you get? Yeah. Yeah. It's like that chat was the best bit because we could talk about that forever then. <laughs> Switzerland was really expensive, so we didn't buy food <laughs> from. <laughs> Like stores, so we just went to corner shops and bought. We bought like pasta and pasta sauce, and we debated whether the pasta, because it was like fresh pasta, whether we had to boil it, you know, <laughs> because we didn't have that at the thing. So we just ate this sort of like raw, but sort of very al dente pasta with <laughs> pesto. <laughs> <laughs> it was very expensive. <laughs> I can tell by the depths that you've stooped to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How was the skydive? Uh, that was actually fun. Uh, I didn't let on that I was terrified of heights to anybody because I wanted to be cool. Um, and I was absolutely so terrified. But then when when I did it, it was fun. It, I think it was nice because it was, like, beautiful out there but mm. also i kept on making this joke the jokes to the i kept on making jokes to the man who was doing the skydiving with me about like we were staying at this town called interlaken um which is it's in between two lakes anyway there's heaps of like ceramic <laughs> there was heaps of like ceramic bulls around the town um and i kept saying it was like uh rockhampton because you know how rockhampton has heaps of ceramic bulls i don't know if you guys know that but I've been there. I, I thought didn't it was a, the bulls, to be honest. I thought it was a pretty good joke that um, everybody <laughs> could get behind. Um, and when <laughs> I was in who Switzerland, was, who was supposed to be laughing about the joke? Well, I was just saying, like, how crazy is it that this place is exactly like Rockhampton? I don't know. I hadn't started comedy yet. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know at that point. But then I got the the man who was skydiving with me, who was strapped to my back. Guess where he was from? Rockhampton (laughs) and even with that connection he still didn't find it funny (laughs) 
that's so upsetting. <laughs> he, he should have been on board for that at least. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, because I was like, it's crazy. Did you choose this town because of the bulls? <laughs> Is that a prerequisite you have? You've got to yeah. live in towns with giant bulls everywhere? Didn't find that funny. <laughs> No, I'm on your side with that, but that bit's great. <laughs> I think so too. Anyway, he can <laughs> he can suck it. Was there was there a bit that you did that involved your mum that she loved and was showing people? And what was it? Uh, there's been like a few. One of them was well. One of them was like the first. The first bit I ever did. The first bit I ever wrote was, I think it's like a typical thing. I'm thinking about talking about it again because obviously the first time you write something, it's not great. But um, it was about how when I was a teenager um, and I got my, and this is going to sound like a, you know, what do you, like a stereotypical thing. When I got my period for the first time, I had to go to a pool party that day and uh, my mum was like, well, we need to get you a tampon. And so then we went that first of all you don't want to do that the first day you get it you just want to not go for a swim but my mum she took me to the shops she bought it for me on the way to the pool party and then she took me into the pool party on the way to the pool party and then you have like a window now (laughs) yeah just like get it in and go to the pool party go do some backstroke fuck that (laughs) horrible and then, so I didn't even know where my vagina was at that point. Also, like, how am I going to figure out where to put that? Don't worry, mum. Mum told me because we went into the disabled stall, and then my mum showed me how to put one in by her putting one into herself in front of me. Um, oh no! Uh, uh. And so I talked about that because uh, that was a scarring event that I needed to talk about. Um, <laughs> and mum loved it and shared it with everyone. That video? Sure. Proud of it. Look at what a good mother I am. Um, And then the other thing was about her getting laser hair removal and telling me all about it. Basically anything to do with my mum is her oversharing of things that I don't want to know about. Which she's kind of cotton on to and she's starting to think that she can, like, manufacture these moments. Yeah, do things on purpose. Yeah, has she not been ashamed by anything that you've said on stage? She's just no. it all up. She just said once she said at the shop somebody said to her um that she had a real neat puss because that's a line from it where I talk about her her laser head. Yeah. And she Someone said somebody that to her? Yeah, somebody in the shop said that she had a real neat puss and then That's fucking she, amazing. Yeah, and she <laughs> said that she was like, oh, I couldn't believe it. But I knew that she was happy with it because she she loved it. She loved it. Also, <laughs> they said real neat puss instead of, you know, the bit where I said she'd aged horribly in her face. <laughs> <laughs> it's Everybody just the idea friends. of you leaving Townsville because your parents <laughs> are getting divorced is so funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I am not sticking around for this. <laughs> I'm not. Well, they'd been divorced and it was just a nightmare. They were being children. You know, they were just like doing things like they said that they were going to be friends and then they were not friends. Um, and, oh, they would like they couldn't talk to each other. And for my 18th birthday, I'd have three 18th birthday parties because – they didn't want to be in the same room together. So I'd have a birthday party with my mum, a birthday party with my dad, and a birthday party with my friends. And yeah. all they were all psycho events. Number one, my mum, the 18th birthday my mum planned, she invited – she didn't invite one of my friends because she doesn't like her, my best friend, who I moved to <laughs> London to live with. <laughs> so she invited some why of the does, family. Why does your mum not like her? Okay, well, this is so- – okay, because when <laughs> – before we were friends, my mum thinks that. Do you remember those? Do you remember Mighty Beans? Mighty Beans, Rings they were bell. like little like moose toys, and they were in the shape of a bean, and they had different faces on, and you'd yeah, hold them in yeah. your hand, and they'd sort of move around. So when I was a child, I took some Mighty Beans to school, and somebody stole my Mighty Beans, and my mum thinks that this girl stole them, and she's my best friend. 
So at that point we <laughs> weren't friends. Like so my mum's years. holding yeah, my mum's holding a grudge against a seven or eight year old. Um, <laughs> for a crime that she did not commit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's like I don't know, maybe she stole the mighty beans. Who knows? She was a child. She just wanted some mighty beans if it was her. It could have been anybody. I don't know. Why are you holding a grudge against this child? You're still not inviting her to my birthday. Also, by the way, my mum believes in star signs and they're born on the same day. So they have the same star sign. I don't know. I don't believe in star signs. It's just weird that my mum, if she believes in them, she should think that they're similar. I don't know. Um, So mum... Mum didn't invite her to my 18th birthday party, but she did invite three other friends of mine, uh, my nana, my granddad, some high school friends of hers, um, and then she invited my high school music teacher. Um, <laughs> Why? Because I was friends with my high school music teacher. He's he's great, Mr McGrath. He's a wonderful man. She invited yeah. him. I, lo- I love Mr McGrath. Don't get me wrong. Did I potentially... Want an eighteen year old an eighteen birthday party where it was just my friends and yeah I did you know um, <laughs> but why did he come was he trying to root your mum no okay well this is a whole weird thing my mum and my nana kept trying to set me up with my music teacher um, they liked him with Mr McGrath yeah but me and Mr McGrath we're just friends he had a fiance I wasn't into him he's what, just how, my friend wait, how old was he I like twenty four I don't know he's when you were just, 18. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But like, I don't. I think it's psycho. As I don't th- yeah, I don't think anyone in your family should be trying to get you to yeah. root your teacher. No, yeah, that's also, so weird. We very just very much just friends. Lovely man. You know shouldn't his be partner. having to say we're just friends about <laughs> your fucking music I teacher, know. And your mum. <laughs> It's very hard. Anyway, he came and um, bought me a CD um, for my birthday. As I said, music teacher. Um, the CD. Classic music teacher move. Yes. And when you're gifted a CD, I feel like you feel the need to, you have to play the CD, right? Yeah. Because yeah. there's music there being then. played. Exactly. So at my 18th birthday party, I was playing the music that my music teacher gave me and that album was James Morrison and the Idea of North. I don't know if you know, James Morrison is a trumpet player and the Idea of the North are a scatting quartet. So in the background of my 18th birthday party, the song that was playing was Dear John, a letter to say you better pack up your bags because we are through. That was my <laughs> background. Comical music for a comical time. <laughs> it was it was insane. Every party was just a nightmare. Yeah. What was and your dad's one like? My dad's one was my dad's a bank manager and he sort of like finances like businesses and stuff. And so there was a restaurant that he got a deal at that I could have my birthday party at. <laughs> and so it was just my family at the back of this pub with like cakes and stuff and then like only family because dad didn't want any of my friends to come except for not your mom. like except for yeah. Helen, my friend who my mom had banned from her party was allowed to come to that one. But my other friends, my dad didn't consider close friends because I'd only been friends with them for like five years instead of my whole childhood. Um, and so then we're just sitting there opposite my cousin who I don't really get along with very well. Um, <laughs> and it was just like a night of everybody talking about like some everybody's just being annoying the whole night <laughs> talking about the divorce not mentioning my birthday um it's just everybody's <laughs> bitching about my mum um and so then the third weekend it's the third weekend of my birthday because i had to these do the these parties weekends. over this three different even, weekends yeah by the end of it my like friends were like Friday, can we stop celebrating your birthday now <laughs> <laughs> also, why does your one, like the one that you organised, why does that last? Because oh, mum and dad had fights over who got what weekend um, <laughs> and what day. And so I just got what was left. Um, be a lot of I want to meet everyone in your family. Is there a reunion coming up <laughs> I can come to? There is, but it's not that side of the family. And I'm not oh. going to that one. Have I? Okay, wait. Is that mum or dad's side that you're not going to? A dad's side. Mum's side don't have reunions because there's only like six of them. 
Um, but dad's side always have reunions and there was a chat going recently that was like the family reunion chat and this lady, I put it on my Twitter because I think it's so funny. This lady who was like, there's so many people in our family on that side. It's like there was like 100 people in this group chat and this lady sent this video of a man um, and he's got like an erect penis and he's pushed the erect penis down between his legs um, and then shut them so it's sort of caged back and then he's got an egg on his stomach and then he opens his legs and the dick comes flying up and smacks open the egg Um, and she sent that to our family group chat (laughs) and the first reaction is just my uncle Steve being like hey just letting you know there's kids in this chat but also like sort of me and my cousins being like, are we classified as the kids? Like, <laughs> what is this? But also then people started bulk leaving the group. So I don't know if the reunion's even happening anymore. <laughs> <laughs> who's, the, who's the lady? Is it like an aunt or a cousin? I or? have no idea. Her name's Trudy and I've never, <laughs> ever heard or seen of her before me and my cousins became obsessed with her so we started stalking her on facebook she lives in victoria like a bent banella somewhere i don't even know where that is she lives out there i've never heard or seen her before and then her people like her husband we he was in the chat he was trying to explain that her phone must have been hacked but then she came in and was like sorry i guess people just have a different sense of humor to other people (laughs) (laughs) yes Trudy. <laughs> Didn't even take the bait. <laughs>